Hi, my name is Judy and I'm the City Stitcher and welcome to my Floss Tube channel. Today is Monday, August the 14th and the answer is yes, I've been a big giant slacker these last couple of weeks and didn't make any floss tubes purely because I was slacking off. Technically the first week was because I felt like I didn't have a lot to show the second week, I had frittered away the week doing other things and enjoying being outside and I felt like I still didn't have much to show, but now I feel like I have stuff to show and I was like, if you get out of the habit, you're going to get out of the habit, so you need to get back on this. So yes, I'm back. Okay. Yes, it's summer. Uh, I'm also going to say it's we're having glorious weather here at the moment. So I am in the sunroom. I have the, the drapes open and everything, um, which normally um, on a day like today, I normally would not have the drapes open in this room because otherwise like the temperature is going to be like a bajillion degrees. Um, but I've got, um, sorry, I've, so I've got the drapes open and I laughed because as I was pulling everything together, I was like, this is a bad idea. I should have left the drapes shut while I pulled everything together and then opened them when I was ready to record because the room's getting really warm. So we'll just see how glowy I get over the course of making this video. If you are new to this channel, thank you for stopping by and spending some time with me. This is a channel predominantly about cross stitch, but this week, because I've been away for a couple of weeks, is also going to have some crocheting in it as well. Yeah, there's things to talk about. Um, Yes, and to all of you who are returning viewers, thank you so much for being patient and waiting for me to, you know, get my act together and, you know, make a floss tube. <laughs> I've given you a break so that you two could be on, take a little bit of vacation time. I was talking to a friend of mine who laughed because she was kind of going like, oh my goodness, it's taking me all week to catch up on floss tube. And I said, see, I was doing my part by not putting one out because it would just add to what was in your lineup. Anyway, I'm behind on floss tube. Is, I feel like, isn't everybody behind on floss tube to a certain extent? I'm certainly behind on floss tube. Anyway. So yeah, the weather is wonderful, awesome, lovely, warm, which is why I've been spending some lovely quality time outside. Um, I do have a Slurpee. It's waiting for me. It's my reward once I get this video uploading and doing all of its things and I get to go back out. I get to go back outside. It's not back outside. I get to go outside with my Slurpee and enjoy the sunshine. Um, so we've got a couple of days coming up this week where the high temperatures are gonna be like in the mid 90s, which for us, where I live up here in Alberta, Canada, those are roasty toasty numbers. Uh, I know that there are people in uh, some of the Southern states where those are not roast. I mean, they're still warmish, but you know, they certainly get warmer tempers than that. But certainly for people, where I live, that's where a lot of people get really cranky and um, uh, a lot of houses um, here do not have air conditioning, uh, mine included, but I do know, um, like I say, I know how to keep my blinds shut given the directions the windows face that actually um, my house doesn't get overly, I can usually manage it so that it's usually okay. I've had, uh, a couple of years ago, we had some temperatures that sort of were uh, like 35 degrees Celsius. We're coming up to that for like, I think tomorrow it's supposed to be like 34 degrees Celsius. So that might be a little bit, uh, we'll see how I do. But anyway, I usually know how to manage my window coverings so that the house actually stays okay. Um, but anyway, I, I'm glad we're having warm. I'm just, I'm a little... I'm a little concerned when I go into the stores because I see all like all the Halloween stuff is out, all the back to school stuff is out, which don't get me wrong, school is starting in a couple of weeks, so I'm that's that's normal. But it's like seeing so much fall stuff and I'm like going, I want summer for like another month and then we can have fall. We all know that I don't I don't you know, have any control over the weather, so anyway, yeah lovely and warm and glorious and all the things I love about summer so all right with that let's get into some of the comments uh from the video from the last video I did um 
as always, I get to the end of the video and I always remember, like, there's always one thing I forget to mention. Um, I forgot to talk about um, Joelle from Cross Stitch Joe. She's got an Etsy shop. I will put a link to her um, Etsy shop in the in the notes section down below. She's got some really lovely Biscor news. Um, Cheryl from Happy Hand. The thing that reminded me is I watched Cheryl from Happy Handcraft Studio and she was like, and I was like, oh, right, I forgot to talk about Joelle's store. If you are a Wizard of Oz fan, she does have a truly fabulous um, Wizard of Oz Biscornu. She's got one that's got, she's got, she doesn't have like, you know, hundreds of patterns. She's got a few patterns out there. They're lovely. Um, so I will put a link to her Etsy shop in the notes section down below for you to go have a look at her stuff. Um, yeah, the the Wizard of Oz one is really good. For what she gets to fit on on something that's a Biscornu, it's it's amazing. Um, so Penelope's posies. Uh, so thank you. I think it's Dee who was talking about that they had received it as a gift and wasn't overly sold on it. But now that I'm adjusting all the colors, she's gonna wait till I get mine and see where I place things and all that kind of stuff. And then she made the joke about hopefully it's going to happen sometime in the next five years. And yes, it absolutely is because it's my library project at the moment, which means um, this next Saturday, the 19th, when we're having stitching at the library, um, I will be working on it. So next week, so a week from today, maybe even Sunday, we'll see how I do Sunday, Monday. Um, I will uh, get my video done and I will uh, show you how much progress I make on Penelope's posies um, that I will be working at at the library. So it should not take me five years to get it finished. Hopefully if it doesn't get finished at this next library one, I might bring it home and work on it. I feel like it should be fairly easy to finish the stitching on that and now that I have everything set up in markup rxp hopefully when I get to the library I'll actually be productive with my stitching uh Charjay, I am a terror I'm terrible I have not sent that email to you uh so as part of the processing of this hopefully once it's all done it's processing I will take that darn picture for you and I will get it sent off to you so you can see that locket um or the lock for the gold um, gifts of the magi that we talked about. You're on my list to do. Uh, Lisa, uh, thank you for your comment about turning the pins into needle minders. And yes, that's always a possibility. But I'm not going to be quick to take to um, get the pin backing off of them and turn them into needle minders until I assess whether they belong as part of the finishing of some of my, of the things that I'm planning on turning into small pillows um, as part of my, what's turning into my royalty collection. Anyway, um, so yeah, we'll see, St stay tuned. At some point, those things may get turned into finished objects, fully finished objects, and we'll see what I do with them. And also she had the comment about, she laughed about my comment about, um, in the last video about the drinking game, about taking a drink every time I say the word, like I've changed something. Um, she said, oh my goodness, I've been, <laughs> I've been playing that drinking game on your floss tube channel for a long time, which I thought was hilarious. Yes, if you've been watching me for a while, you know that I'm not good about exactly following the instructions. Anyway. Uh, H. Eden, uh, thank you for your comment. Uh, she's, she, he's currently working, no, it's a she, is currently working on Jardin Privé's Quaker de la Ferme. Um, so yeah, uh, I thought it was interesting. She's doing it for her husband and her husband, uh, picked the color and it's a DMC 943. So an aqua, which is interesting. It's always, it's always interesting when you ask people, what their favorite color is, particularly like if you give them a DMC color card, it sounds ridiculous, but if you have one, it's a fun little family entertaining game of laying out all of the colors and saying, what is your favorite color? Um, it might surprise you. I know when I did it with my parents, my dad's answer like came as a complete surprise to both my mother and myself. <laughs> Just like, I'm sorry, what? 
anyway, he still sticks by it. He can still, I can bring out, I could bring out the DMC color card now and haul it out and he would know where his color is. Um, so he is sticking with his, with his color. Um, and then, uh, she also said, are you actually going to stitch the bananas and the oranges? Oh my goodness. Like, uh, orange and yellow. Um, so I do have a plan. It might require some changes to the, the design as to what I'm actually going to do with it. So stay tuned, um, to see what happens with those. Anyway, um, I have a, I have a concept for what I'm going to do with that one. So yeah. Will I, will I follow the, the pattern as called for? No, that, that's, that's not going to happen. It's going to be something else, but okay. Uh, and then Girly, thank you so much for your comment. Uh, so she left a comment that Lakeside Needlecraft in the UK actually has a coronation fabric. Um, so it's fabric that you can purchase. So cross stitch fabric, um, I think you've got choices between like Ada, Linen, and Lugana, but don't quote me on that. I did go look it up. Um, and it's got the coronation emblem in, in the corners of the fabric. So thank you for that. I might be purchasing some. I think I have to figure out what would fit on that piece of fabric so that it would make the emblems work. I don't have that figured out yet. Um, but yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for telling me about that fabric because I did not know about it. So that was awesome. All right. With that, let's get into some stitching because I do have things to show in some random order that I've, I've put over here. Okay, so I'm going to start off with like the tail end of July. Um, so July 25th, uh, I haven't shown you this. I'm working on my Little Bits of Christmas by the Drawn Thread. I'm working on this on the 25th of every month. The goal of stitching... Um, one block a month so that there's the thought process that I potentially could turn this into a fully finished object before Christmas Day this year. Maybe. No promises. And as with all of my things, um, was struggling with what to do with this next block, but I have now come up with, I have finalized where the placement of all of the remaining blocks is going to go on this because um, I'm adjusting it from, I'm, so I'm, I'm expanding, it's a version of this, but I've got a whole other row. So it's gonna be all, it's gonna be 12 blocks, uh, four rows of three blocks. Um, so I have now finalized what, where each of the blocks are gonna go, all that kind of stuff. I now have a, a finalized plan um, originally I was going to take it to stitching at the library and I forgot to do that. So I had to make the decisions all by my very self. Um, I do need to do a couple of, um, uh, adjustments to the charts, um, so that I'm ready for my August stitching and my September stitching, but I do know what the plan is. I did get my July block in, so... I'm stitching this, I think it's on a 32 count Serene Lugana by Picture This Plus. If it's not 32, it's 28, check in the notes below. Um, it definitely is Serene. Um, and so the, the July block was the stockings that I did here. So my August, um, my August block is going to be here and my September block is going to be here. So those are what the next two blocks are going to be. Uh, so you'll get to see those. Um, but yeah, so I got those done. I, I swapped out the, I don't think I'm using the called for um, gold in the stockings. Um, I think I'm using Dinky Dyes Aussie Gold. I'll put it in the notes section down below. This is the only place where gold is used in the design. It's just that little bit there. So I, if you don't have something specific for it, honestly, I would just say go find a DMC that fits, fits your palette and use that. Um, 
and it'll be fine because it really is it's it's just there so it's like sub sub 50 stitches in totality in all of this so yeah so I got those done so I was pleased pleased with that pleased that I also I did spend the time where I finalized the placement of where everything was going um, so yeah that's that's coming along I just realized I forgot to put my basket see I'm out of practice and oh my goodness it's very warm in here it's very warm in here lemonade all right and then to round off July I'll have to stand up here in a bit. Uh, so, um, the Victoria Sampler Gifts of the Magi Frankincense. Um, this also ties into um, uh, stash acquisitions. Um, so, I did go out to traditional stitches, and they did have the Japan Gold that I needed to do the couching. Um, of my number eight braid uh, for this particular piece. I'm stitching this on a 28 count antique white Lugana. And so this is what it looks like. So this is as far as it's going to get finished um, at the moment. Yeah. I feel like it surprisingly just, just Despite how sunshiny it is, I don't feel like we're getting really great lighting here at the moment. But anyway, so uh, what did I do? So I ripped out my frankincense, as I discussed last week, and I did it all as one over one um, full crosses. And so I ripped, so I ripped it out. I ripped it all out, and then I started with my one over one. Went. I don't know that this is really going to make a big difference but I'd already ripped out all the rest of it. It was like well you're stuck now. When I got to the end of it I was very happy with it. So I had a little bit of momentary saying I don't know that it's really going to make that much of a difference but the answer is I think it actually really does make a big difference. So when it uh, so when I go to do myrrh and gold I will hopefully remember <laughs> remind myself that I'm doing it one over one um, the outlining, so last video I was talking about that I was potentially going to change it, that I, so I had taken my, um, the na the navy trebizond that I was using in here, and, uh, DMC 823 was, like, essentially a perfect match. And I talked about that, um, when I did it time number two, I, wasn't sure that it was necessarily the right color that I maybe needed to brighten it up. So then I hauled out 820 like I talked about, put it on there, and it was an immediate... Oh, see, it's still sitting beside me here. Here's 820, and I just went... It was it was too bright. It was too royal blue, um, which it's not coming through on the camera, but it was too royal blue, and, it's, and then it stood out too much. So then I did what any normal person would do. I finally went back and looked at my DMC color card and discovered that 820 and 823 are not actually in the same color families. So the next color up from DMC 823 is actually DMC 336. I hauled it out. I kept, I ended up, my final decision was I kept it with DMC 823 and I'm fine with it. So yeah, so I got all of the couching of my number eight braid up here. Uh, redid frankincense. Got the couching done around here. Got the couching done and finished all of this. And then this is um, another row of beads. And then this bottom band is a specialty stitch, which I forget the name of, which I have the pattern here. I should be able to figure this out. The waffle stitch. Got a hair that is 
not behaving itself. Uh, all done with the uh, Karen Wildflowers Nefertiti. And I feel like my the way that the colors came out was pretty good. So there we go. So this is as far as frankincense is going to go at this point in time. This band is not complete and it will not be completed till the very, very end because it's the one that has the ribbon embroidery on it. But yeah. Not all. I'm very happy with this. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I got my July goal accomplished for this. Now, I was hoping that I was going to be able to get this done and actually get a start on myrrh, which didn't happen. Took me a little longer, took me longer than I expected to get all of the couching done, which I don't know why that was, but it just, it did. But as far as I'm concerned, we're in good shape for the making progress on the gifts of the Magi, um, copyright 1995. So I have kept this in my stash long enough and it's now ready to be, you know, worked on. So that's frankincense. Then we have my Sunday stitch air quotes, uh, which is Winter ABCs by Little House Needleworks. I am stitching this on 28 count Springfield Sage Lugana. And there was one week where I didn't work on it at all, but we're, we're making great progress on this. So here's where we're at at this point in time. Um, I got my snowmen finished off and got their eyes and their mouths in, um, the birds, these two birds, you know, they're, they're one stitch for their yellow beaks, which I, I, I really don't do well if there's something really finicky at the end of a stitching session. And I should know that about myself because of course, when I brought it out and I looked at it, I went, you really you just need to get this done. And in fact, I actually saved some, some yellow that I had used earlier on specifically so that I had a small length that was just sitting in the floss away bag, ready to go, knowing that I had these, you know, two little stitches, you know, one here and one there. Anyway, sat down, did them no problem. Um, so yeah. Got the, got the French knots in, have to be very careful with my Q-snaps now, um, where they get placed, because we're at the, at the bottom end, so I have to be very careful about how I get it into a Q-snap. Uh, yeah. Now, there is, I was going to say, all the white's in, but all the white's not done, because there are um, flowers here at the bottom that use them. I was going to say, are they snowdrops? Something drops, I think, is what they're supposed to be. Um, so I have, um, really, I just have the basket of flowers left to go in here. And then Winter ABCs is going to be complete. Now, I have my next ABC project picked out. I do not have it kitted up. I have um, some stuff ordered, which has not yet arrived. Um, so I may not have an ABC to work on until that, um, that order um, arrives here, which it's fine. I am well ahead of schedule. I started off um, at the beginning of this year hoping to get spring ABCs completed, period. That was the goal for this year. The fact that spring ABCs is going to be completed, winter ABCs is going to be completed, and I will have a really healthy start on another ABC. Very positive. So that one's coming along lovely, lovely, lovely. Yeah, this is, re this is really close to a finish, so this is for sure going to be an August finish. All right, let's talk about August. I just realized I do not have my phone here, so I can't show you my um, August uh, Quaker by um, From the Heart Needle Art by Wendy. I'm stitching this on a um, white Verdal, 40 count white Verdal. 
at the moment using the called for colors. It's a very sad, for two weeks, the fact that this is the 14th, we are not in good shape. So there's what, 20, 20, 50 stitches in this. I think I'm at about a thousand. It's not good. I'm way behind. I'm really, I'm really feeling I'm Quakered out. Like I will do practically anything not to work on this, which is not positive. I think I need to buckle down and just get it done so then I can move on. But there's, yeah, there's like uh, 1800 stitches left to go on this, 1850. Yeah, there's a lot left to go. I forgot to check uh, in Markup RXP how far I am, but this is really only the center motif and there's more to go. So I think I'm really struggling with my Quakers. Anybody got suggestions? I still want to, I still want to get them done this year. I don't know how to solve the problem. So if anybody's got good suggestions for what to do on that, that would be great. Now, it also doesn't help that we've been having beautiful weather, which means I've been spending a lot of time outside, which also means that sometimes I come in and go, I just don't want to work on stitching. Wait till you, anyway, there's other things to talk about. Good grief, it's warm in here. Warm in here. All right. So then on the 6th of September, which is when I work on my royalty related pieces, I was working on my um, The Coronation of King Charles III piece by Cosford Rye. Cosford Rise Stitchery, yes. Um, so my goal is, well, let me show you where I'm at at the moment. So I stitched, so I made it to a very specific point. I'm stitching this on, it's probably a 20, 28 or 32, 32 count white opalescent Lugana. So I, what I added was the basket and the stems of what are going to be flowers. Um, I did the Scottish thistle. I adjusted the purple in this because the called for purple, which again, given the lighting that I've got right now, was the same color that um, I've used for the cipher, which is really quite dark and not really Scottish thistle-y. So I adjusted the purple in the Scottish Thistle so it was a little closer to what I think real life looks like um, and did the shamrocks. So I have, um, so the, the rose is not complete. So what I've got to finish um, next month in September is the rose, um, the Welsh flowers and then the few flowers that go on top of here and then the beads that I'm planning on using. So up here in the crown and in the scepters and the orbs and all that kind of stuff, there are some stitches that are left to do that I am planning on replacing all of those stitches with beads. Now my plan, so normally I have been stitching all of these things on the sixth of the month, um, just cause that's when I started in 2022. That was the year of Queen Elizabeth II's Platinum Jubilee, and so I was commemorating the date that she became queen. I am planning on stitching on this on September the 8th, because that is the day that King Charles um, became king. So that is the day that Queen Elizabeth II passed away and King Charles became king. So my goal is on September the 8th uh, to do the stitching so that this is absolutely complete on the 8th. So I should <laughs> just have one thing. You should really look at your at, look at your schedule in September and see whether you maybe need to work on it a little bit on the 6th and then make like maybe I should work on it the 6th and get all of the stitching complete and then on the 8th do all the beading. That makes sense. That sounds like a better idea because then I will make sure that it's done on the 8th, which will mark the one year anniversary. So yeah, that's coming along. That's close to being finished. 
And then on the 11th, I have my 11th piece, which is the Remember 911 by Just Nan. And similar to some of the other pieces you've just seen, I'm working on it one day a month. And so this month I got um, these bands here completed. So a total of one, two, three, four bands. Now it's probably hard to tell um, that this, so not this bottom band, but one up is actually a row of backstitched in Roman numerals nine and 11, which of course they're um, IX and XI, which I think you know that that would appeal to me. Um, so it's just, it's just a row of 911, 911, 911 all the way across. Anyway, so I have one more band left to do on this. Yes, band 21. So this bottom band. Now, this is a fairly decent, uh, this is a healthy sized band. So this is... This is certainly more stitching than I've got here. So my goal for this is um, on sep in September, so the first few days, that first week of September, it's going to be busy. My plan is to, uh, in early, that first week of September, work on it so all of the cross stitches in that last band are done because there is beading left to be done on this. And so then... Once the stitching is done, I will sit down on the evening of September 11th and do all the beading and finish this up. So again, this is one where I started it a year ago, September, and it will be finished a year later, essentially having worked on it one day a month. So yeah, it's coming along. There's another one that we're on track to have finished this year. And that is all the stitching I've done over the past two weeks. So it looks not too bad when you know when you pull it all together. That Quaker is killing me because it's it's not coming along very well at all. But check back next week and see how I do. I think I really do need to sit down. We're having really great weather now. Um, the weather forecast today, um, you know, so it gives you sort of the forecast to the end of the week. Where I live, you can't count on that. It's a really nice idea for what it's going to look like, but until we get to the end of the week, who knows what it's really going to look like. Um, but it is forecasting that by like Friday and Saturday, we will have gone from temperatures that are sort of in the mid-90s that the high temperature for the day could be in the low 60s. So could it's it's currently looking like it's going to be a really big swing so it could be cloudy and rainy towards the end of the week which don't get me wrong we need it uh last time i checked the forest fire status we were still like there were still over a hundred forest fires burning in the northern part of the province so a long 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 way away from me but yeah man it, it has been a forest fire season up here in canada so Cloudy and rainy and cooler is probably uh, what we need more than more than really good sunshine for people like me. So I'll be fine if it's cloudy and rainy. All right. That's all of my stitching. Okay, let's talk announcements. Um, I really did need to get this out and I think it's going to come out a little bit late is... Um, for anybody who catches it before Saturday, just a quick reminder that we are having stitching at the library this Saturday coming up. Saturday, August the 19th from 9.30 to 12, 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. at the Signal Hill Library. The address for that is in the notes section down below. You don't need to tell me you're coming in advance. We've got lots of room. Um, you can just stop in and say hi and see what we're working on. Um, if you're just traveling through, you're more than welcome to stop in for a bit. You don't have to come for the full three hours, all that stuff. Um, if you have interest at all, we'd love to see you just come on by um, and see what we're working on. So that's this coming Saturday, August the 19th. 
9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Okay, let's talk stash acquisitions, which I, of course, the bag is on the far side. Okay. Okay, so as I mentioned, I did have a trip out to Traditional Stitches so that I could get the Japan Gold that I needed to um, do the couching for the Gifts of the Magi. And while I was there, I did pick up a few other items. Hang on a second. Kept them in a bag. Okay, yes. So just in case anybody um, is wondering, this is the Japan Gold by Krynik that I picked up. Um, it's on these gigantic spools that they're now using because they can't they can't get the smaller spools that they used to get. So it makes things um, shipping wise a little more interesting. Uh, did pick up some Magnifica beads, these bright green ones. Um, and I got these specifically because I think I need them for my King Charles piece. I also picked up um, by Stone Street Stitchworks uh, Librarian's House. This was on sale. Um, it was half price. And I went, fine, you're coming home. <laughs> so there's that one. And then I picked up a piece of fabric. Now I, now I didn't check this, but I do think I already have a piece of this in my stash. But I was looking um, at a potential project that's going to get slotted into my five-year plan, and I needed a pink fabric. And the pink fabric I already had was um, is targeted for a different project. So while I was there, and while they had it in stock. Um, this is, uh, oh yeah, see, it's too, I don't know. What can I put this beside? Normally what happens is if you put it beside something white, yeah, there you go. See, just a little bit. So it's a very pale pink, but it's, it's, it's a stronger pink than what you're seeing in the camera. It's getting very blown out in the camera um, but it is a pale pink uh, it's called blush by atomic ranch and it is a 32 count lugana and I got a fat quarter and those are my stash acquisitions from traditional stitches now I will say over the past two weeks of course I have discovered what I think happens is I kind of do a, a shopping thing and then I'm totally fine and then I wait and you know nothing happens and then I feel the need to shop and then I shop. Uh, so uh, the orders have been straggling in um, from that last big <laughs> shopping thing um, but as usual I am going to dole them out over the next several weeks. I do have items to show every every week for the next several based on what's already come in. So we're not going to do big catch up on the uh, what I've added to um, to the shopping. We're going to dole that out over the over the next several weeks. Okay. Uh, that's stash acquisitions. We've talked announcements. Okay. The next thing I wanted to talk about is I was just going to do a quick rundown of the stitch alongs or the crochet alongs. I'm going to pull them all together in one thing that I am currently downloading. Um, now we all know it's not like I'm going to be, I am not good about working on a stitch along or a crochet along with anybody at any point in time, but I do download them particularly while they're free. So the, the current stitch alongs that I am downloading to make sure that I'm getting them while they're three, while they are free. Number one is the cliff side um, stitches stitch along that they're currently running. It is a nine week stitch along. Um, I think week seven came out this last Saturday. So there's only two more weeks left to go. There is a cross stitch version and there is a black work version. 
all free for the downloading. I will put a link to the Cliffside Stitches page where you can download, um, download the patterns for free. I will also put a link to their Facebook group um, for this. So they have a different Facebook group um, specifically for this stitch along. I will put a link to that Facebook group in the notes section down below. It's always fun going in and seeing what people are doing. I love the people that work on it like in real time um, and all the different colorways. And one of the ladies in the group came up with her own border, which she very, very graciously put into the Facebook group for free for all of us to get as well. Um, like, yeah, it's just, it's amazing. It's amazing watching what people are doing um, now. Seven years from now, when I get around to working on it, <laughs> I will go back in and I will pick my colors and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, so Cliffside Stitches. The other one I'm downloading is um, in the Victoria Sampler Facebook group. Um, the stitch along that she is running this year is that there is a different tree every month. Um, if you follow Sarah the Stitch and Mummy here on Floss Tube, um, she has been working on, um, I think it was last year's, last year's, two years ago, um, the stitch along that she did with, you know, same thing. So there's a different block for every month and there, um, there's a different scene. Um, so she's working on the one like I say, it was either last year or two years ago. You can still get that one. It is now a paid, you need to pay for the pattern. Um, but the current year, so the 2023 Stitch Along in the Victoria Sampler Facebook group, and the patterns are only available in the Facebook group, is it's a different tree every month. Uh, so it's been fun watching those. Again, you know I can't work on a Stitch Along, you know, that's active, that's that just doesn't work for me because one because it's a mystery you know I don't do well with a mystery well I say that and already I anyway yeah never anyway never mind that um anyway um so the yeah so there's that one I forgot this in in the stash acquisitions so Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts on Etsy uh, is doing a stitch along for Anne of Green Gables. It is a mystery. I have already purchased it, which generally, you know, I'm not, I've just said I'm not good with a mystery. I don't like blah, blah, blah. Now she's done mysteries before. Um, and generally I like how they come out at the end. So, um, I decided I was just going to do it. So I signed up anyway. I like what she did with the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Um, I'm sure she's going to do a great job with the Anne of Green Gables. So I did purchase that stitch along. I'm not going to actively stitch along with it. She also, um, it's part of her book club series. Um, so while the stitch along is going, it's actually also encouraging you encouraging you to read the book. And then I think they've got separate dates um, where you can go into a into a group to talk about to talk about the book and you know there's certain chapters assigned for every week and all that kind of stuff it's not it's I think it's only a four week stitch along um, but I did sign up for that one all right from a crochet along perspective I have two that I am downloading um, now, again, links to all of these things that I'm mentioning will be in the notes section down below if you're looking for them. So number one, Tiffany Hansen, um, who has a, a YouTube channel, she's a crocheter. She is doing a temperature blanket. Clearly, I'm not working on a temperature blanket yet, but I am don't downloading all of her um, her things. What's unique about her version of the temperature blanket is that she has designed a temperature blanket where every month the stitch that you're working on is different. So the pattern that you're stitching for January is different than the pattern you're stitching for February. Which So at the end of the year, you will have done 12 different um, crochet stitches to make your temperature blanket. 
She's got two versions, one for a four weight yarn. Um, for that one, you are stitching a row every other day. So it's um, neither one of these are of her two options are you having to uh, crochet every every day. Um, for her four weight yarn, um, you are only crocheting every other day. She's also uh, using the same stitches, but she's also designed one for a five weight yarn. And in that case, you only have to stitch two rows per week, which when I was looking, I was like, hmm, it'd be interesting to do one that's the four weight and do one that's the five weight. Because I think if I were doing the five weight, I would do the high and the low for every week. Anyway, just, just thoughts. Anyway, um, I'm also downloading um, patterns. There's a free um, crochet along with Craftsy. Um, I think... Yeah, it might even be, I think this week is the last week, the seventh week, where it's like how to put it together. And it's one where you crochet a whole bunch of different squares. And I know I said I was not great on the whole different square thing and having to assemble the thing. Um, similar to the temperature blanket, um, I think there's five or six different patterns for the squares that you're doing. And then you have five or six different colors of yarn. And so they'll say like four pattern pattern number four or block four you need to crochet x number of them but in these combinations of colors so even though you're doing it multiple times you're doing it in different color combinations and then week seven which i think is coming out this week is the one about how to place all of these different squares and all of their different colors and put it all together um, so that one's a free one through craftsy downloading that. So I don't know how long the one on Craftsy is necessarily going to be available. Um, so I'm making sure I'm getting that one downloaded. Uh, so I'm up to date on my downloads on that one. So those are the things, the stitch alongs and the crochet alongs that I am downloading at the moment and trying to keep on, <laughs> trying to keep on top of my downloading. <laughs> I'm not actually doing them. That's going to be for a different year, but I'm downloading them for sure. All right, um, with that, let's get into some crocheting. All righty. Okay, also while I was watching um, Cheryl from Happy Handcraft Studio, I was laughing because she was showing her temperature blanket and she was like going, she really isn't looking forward to crocheting on the temperature blanket at the moment just because, you know, it's turning into a blanket. And I, too, have had that with my blanket that I have been crocheting. Where you're just like, it's too warm. And as much as I like working on it, the blanket is now too big. It's still got a long way to go, but it's too big to be comfortable working on it. But I did get a bunch Um stitched since you last saw it. So again, because I'm using my stitch markers. So this is where this is where it was when, you know, somebody smartly said, hi, just put in a stitch marker. This is where it was um, at last, the last video that I did. So I still have managed to get a decent number of rows completed. So that's not bad. It still made progress. It really does need to go away until it gets cooler. So maybe, you know, with the temperatures going down to like highs of 15 degrees Celsius, there is a distinct possibility that by the end of this week, it could be like, okay, now it's time to work on the blanket. But yes, it's, it's, it's a blanket. So it's, it's, it's coming along. So, you know, it's getting to be a good size, but we still have a long way to go. I have finally made it through, um, this last row of gray used up the end of my first ball of gray. So I'm expecting that as I go through the next, uh, the three uh, teal colors, that those balls will also get used up. So we're through a full ball of those. And then I just thought it would be interesting to show you, um, I know that I said that this is for my guest bedroom. It's turning into a really big blanket. 
anyway hang on a second I thought it would be interesting just to show you and given that it's a really warm day in here <laughs> okay here's the blanket here is the pillow sham for the bedding in my guest bedroom I think it's just fabulous I could be biased but I think it's fantastic it's gonna it's gonna be perfect so I'm very pleased with how it's coming along um, yes I will bring it to stitching at the library assuming I, I remember to pack it <laughs> okay now I know that I said that I was gonna limit myself that I was gonna have two projects going at a time and I wasn't going to start another poncho until I finished the weaving into that um, spring plaid poncho, which all the crocheting is done. The weaving has not yet been done. So you know that when it was getting really warm and toasty and working on the blanket was just too hot. I didn't want to do the weaving. So I went, oh yeah, I forgot that one. Let's talk about crochet stash acquisitions. Hang on a minute. I really am going to have to move you to get to that one. I forgot. See, I'm out of practice. Yes, I have been purchasing yarn as well. So, you know, it's going to be stash acquisitions in both sections for the next little while. So also from Tiffany Hansen, um, she did a bloom shawl um, that I like the look of. She used a um, Premier Yarns um, yarn to make that particular shawl and it was white with green and a very rosy pink, which it was perfectly lovely the way it was. Um, and then I went and I was looking for the yarn to see what other color options it came in. And it also came in this colorway, which is called Sea Holly, which has, so it's predominantly white with um, blue and um, sort of like a navy, navy denim, -y, dark denim -y blue and aqua, which is really my colors. Uh, so I ordered this. I did get it. Um, I did get it as a bundle of three. Now the shawl that she did only requires one, but I felt I was going to love the yarn, so I got the set of three. It's really lovely yarn. So as any sane, normal person would do, when I got the yarn and I went, "Ooh, this is lovely." lovely 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 and the shawl is going to work out to be lovely 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 I did what any sane normal person would do which is I then ran out to well okay first I went online and looked at Michael's because that's the nearest yarn shop to me and looked at things this is a three weight so here's, uh, here's what it is. Premier Yarns Bloom. This is the Sea Holly version. It is, lost it, there it is. So there, it's a three weight yarn. Anyway, so I then went to Michael's because I went, before I use the really, really lovely, lovely yarn, I should maybe do a practice one, right? Make sure I've got it down. So I went to um, I went to Michael's and I picked up this yarn, which I thought was the three weight because it was in the whole section. The other ones were also also said they were a three weight, but this particular version. Uh, so this is Loops and Threads Flex, which is a Michael's branded yarn. Turns out it's a four weight yarn. Uh, with the color of powder blue but I went this is what I'm going to use for my practice one so um, in the premier yarns there's like 656 yards 
so I got a couple of balls of um, of this and I started and I love working on it I love working on it and it's so much nicer to work on because it's you know so much lighter and than my big blanket but I've made a lot of progress and I've used up an entire ball so I'm already on ball number two and I love I love this yarn as well so I'm just making sure I don't lose things so again so this is a Tiffany Hansen pattern um, the pattern is free if you watch the YouTube video which is what I did I watched the YouTube video and then I just wrote down the instructions in a Word document if you don't want to write them down you can buy the pattern off of her Etsy I don't know if it's either from her Etsy shop or directly from her website for you know I think it's two or three dollars or something like that um, but if you watch if you watch the video the pattern is free so I've started working on it so this is a this is doubled up it's a four row repeat lovely 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 I love how this is working up to the point where I've also said to myself I think you should make a poncho with this as well so I've actually bought went back to Michael's and bought more of it so yes, I'll have a shawl, plus my goal is to then make a poncho as well. It's got a four row repeat, um, and I laugh because once I'm into the row, I don't need to look at the, pa at the pattern, um, but I have to look at the pattern every time I get to the end of the row and I go, sorry, what am I doing here? <laughs> every time I have to look at it. After all of, all of these rows, I still have to look at the pattern and go, sorry, what do I do at the end of the row? Once I'm in the row, no problem. No thought required. Off I go. If you can count to five, you can do it. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so this is a ball plus some plus some crocheting. And I really, yeah, I love working on it. Love working on it. And the funny thing is, so I did, um, I did go and see the movie Oppenheimer um, since you last saw me. Um, it's a three hour long movie, three hours. And it was really funny because, um, you know, you go to the movie theater, it's an air conditioned movie theater. I was freezing to death in the movie theater. And I dressed for air conditioning, right? I'm cold at the best of times. Now I'm totally feeling the warmth in here because it's very warm in here. <laughs> but in, in air conditioning, I'm not so good. So I had worn shoes and socks, full length jeans, a long sleeve shirt, um, and an early spring jacket. Um, I think the friend that I went with kind of looked at me and went, what are you dressed for? <laughs> anyway, but I was freezing to death. And it was funny, as I've been working on this, I've been going like, yeah, this would be really good to take to like a movie, you know, you could just be like a little blanket that I could, you know, sort of wear into the movie theater and then it would you know be my blanket once I was finished eating the popcorn because you know if you're going to go to the movie theater you have to have the popcorn it's kind of like a rule but anyway so yes so I bought um I bought the balls to do the shawl of this plus some extras so that I can make a poncho out of it poncho pattern yet to be determined but I love I love how it's working up and then as soon as I'm done, as soon as I'm done this one, my plans are immediately to start on this one. So yes, because I am discovering that while the temperatures are, are warm and toasty, I still like doing my crocheting. Um, yeah, I, 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 oh, I, that darn it, Cheryl, I'm enjoying the crocheting. There, I've said it. Anyway, so this will be my next one because the first one's working up perfectly well. I know what I'm doing. I'm going to do it all over again, the exact same pattern, only in this one. So you should be seeing that one um, probably in the next, 
probably about two weeks from now. I expect that that first one's going to be done and the second one will be started. So yeah, that's my crocheting. And I will say sometimes when you come in after an evening on the balcony, yeah, I just come in and I just want to watch Netflix and chill and just crochet something and not have to count and pay attention to the pattern, which is why they're which is why that darn Quaker is not going anywhere. Anyway, that's what I have for you this week. Uh, yes, I'm back. Nothing was wrong with me. I was just slacking off, truthfully. Anyway, we'll see how we do. I was said, it's summertime. I'm <clears throat> no guarantees on exactly when the videos are going to come up. And I did slack off, so maybe I'll hopefully be better for the rest of this month. Um, might be doing some traveling in September. We'll see about that. If there is travel, that I will know in advance, so I can let you know. With that, I'm going to wrap it up while it's getting roasty, roasty toasty in here and hopefully get this loaded up. So I hope uh, everybody's staying safe. Of course, thinking of the people of the Ukraine, certainly thinking of the firefighters that are working in all sorts of places all over Canada. Thinking of the people in Hawaii, in Maui, with all of the destruction with their wildfires. It's been a bad wildfire season. So thinking of everybody, safety first, safety first, safety first. Um, so I hope everybody's staying safe. I hope everybody's staying healthy. And I hope you're all finding some time to do some stitching. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.